Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial by Madison Studios. We're going to be going through a water pipe schematic. So the reason you would use one of these is to show plumbers exactly where everything is connected, where the turn off valves are, so on and so forth. So as you can see on screen, this is a layout of all the different appliances within the home connected by the pipe work. Now as you can see on the screen we've got a blue and a red pipe, obviously cold pipe and hot water pipe. And this was obviously created in Trimble SketchUp. And it's a really nice way of working as it gives the person an element of interactivity and a real sort of feel of where exactly everything is. You will also be able to export that as a razor sharp PDF. Now very often when you export from SketchUp you'll be doing it as a TIFF, JPEG or PNG which generally exports as very thick lines. The great thing with doing it as a PDF is you can bring it into Adobe Illustrator, select all the lines and make them 0.25 points which is great for printing printing these sort of details anyway. So as you can see on the screen we're just simply following the red, green and blue axes your X, Y and Z. Always stick to these because if you start going in between well the in between ones would be your X, Y, Z, Y and your other combinations but that would be shown up as black. Well they're not great because you haven't got anything to it, it's got no coordinates it, it's not stable and it doesn't stick to where you want it to so always remember work along your axes and you can con you can constrain along those axes by holding down shift now these lines are currently being drawn on the screen but they're simply following a pencil drawing that a plumber has kindly come up with and fed back to, to us uh, and we're just to simply neaten them up and make them into something a little bit more usable. Now as you can tell I'm not really typing in dimensions but generally if I were coming up with this sort of uh, schematic I would want there to be dimensions to tell the plumber exactly the length that they're going to be working with and where exactly those uh, cut off valves are but this is only an illustration this is just to neaten up a plumber's drawings so for now we can get away with it but as you saw before when we were creating that sort of two forked prong you could type in specific measurements that's currently measuring 1000 uh, 1000 millimeters out so you can see we're covering a very large area something else I, I found helpful is you can see the use of inferencing within this model inferencing and also the constraining along an axis inferencing is when you're you constrain it along your green red or blue axes but you're actually lining it up with another element on the screen so like this one I'm lining it up on the blue axes constraining it along there but I want the height to measure the same as the pipe next to it as the one that's selected now so to do that you simply hold down your shift constrain it along that axis and click on the top part of that line where you want your final line to measure up to this is a lovely organic and quick way of working
So again, use of inferencing, we want it to be of the same height as this pole over here. So you would constrain it and then it has a link that would click it to that point. What's really nice as well is instead of using the follow me command to draw a pipe and then have it follow all those other pipes, what you can actually do is select in the materials, obviously as you can see I've created a hot water pipe in colour to indicate the hot water pipes, but you can actually colour those lines exactly the ones that you want. Now to speed this up you can select everything by pressing Control A and then clicking on one of them and it will colour everything. So you see that can save you a huge amount of time. going to start adding some annotation in and what I really like about Trimble SketchUp's annotation is that those words constantly face the camera and if you've got say two three four maximum I would say the annotation is absolutely brilliant but as we will see later on when you start adding a lot more annotation it then starts to get a bit mucky, which is where probably an isometric plan of the pipes comes in a lot better. Because when you think about it, perspective is falling away from you. You put wording right up to the camera, it's going to be big and readable. You put that same type, let's say, a hundred feet away from you, even though it's the same size, due to perspective, it's going to be a lot more scrunched up and it's going to turn out to be a black blob in effect. And so using this method has its advantages, but like everything, it also has its disadvantages. But it's really up to you, the designer, to decide as to how best to gauge it. You will know best.
Now, this is where it starts to get just a little bit mucky. In a minute, I'll press scene one, and we'll see that the old position of the camera actually causes a lot of the annotation to overlap and to, to actually be quite mucky. A really nice advantage to actually working with dimensions also is that if you're, you've made everything red, you can actually right click in the materials and have it calculate how much area that piping takes up. So your estimates for a particular building or a floor or whatever can be actually quite accurate if you're working with dimensions. Don't forget as well to regularly save. Make everything the same color and let's not forget to put everything on the same layer. Now for some reason there's a lot more but we'll just refresh it. There we go. Now it's come back. So we'll get rid of that because we don't need that one. But organization is the key. Select everything move it onto the relevant layer, turn everything else off, and voila, it's done. Great. But now we need to start putting in the symbols. So if we go to file and open up an, another drawing that we've recently done, we can select those three symbols that seem to occur ever, ever so often, like the stop valves and so forth, and the dead end for water. And to keep our drawings consistent, we'll use the same ones, and we can just rotate and move them into position, which is fairly quick, but it is also very time consuming, because sometimes your axes don't quite line up, and can cause a little bit of a headache, but really need to be patient with this. Okay, let's just minimize the panels, see how much we're rotating it. So we're looking at about 180. There we go. Right, now we can move it into place. Also, they're all components because I wanted it so that if I made one bigger, all the rest would be bigger and everything. But unfortunately, we can't make it, we can't chop out that middle pipe, as it were, once it's a component. So you have to explode the component, and then you can chop out that pipe. Which I find is a little bit awkward, but you never know, with an update, it may change. We don't need these ones. Let's select in the middle, there, concrete there. And to drag a copy over, constrain it on the red axis, press control. That makes it a copy. Very good. Okay. It really is just a case of working around, seeing where everything is, patiently going through it all. Now, if you go to file and print and make sure you're printing to a PDF, what this does is it actually creates this pin sharp PDF of your model. But be warned, it does chop out some of the annotation because I'm guessing it doesn't view that as a model. So potentially to get around that is you could place 
a random line or something just to outline the area and then that will take into account all the annotation and hopefully include it in the final PDF. So now, and I do apologise, there is an awful lot of to and fro from one PDF to another, to an updated one, to an old one, and so forth. Because what I'm doing at this point is actually comparing and working out how to get all my annotation in. But when coming up with this tutorial, it sort of dawned on me to place a random line quite far away. Keep asking you to overwrite it and see to no avail. So I am guessing you'll have to stick a line, stick a line in there. Now, the way I work is uh, I generally have a scene one and a model maintenance because instead of getting tired of, and the whole sort of zooming in and out and everything with the middle mouse button and the scroll wheel. I found with a model maintenance scene, what you can actually do is when you're working up close to something, update the model maintenance scene, and then you could go to scene one, zoom out, get a context view of it, see how everything fits, and then go back into the model maintenance, back to where you originally were. So it's not a hard and fast rule, but I've just found it really helpful for me when I'm working on rather big projects. I really hope you found that interesting, guys, and hope to uh, hear from you soon. Take care. Bye.